Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is a base destruction video. Haven't done one of these videos in quite a while, but I want to get back to it because I think it's a good series that can be helpful um, for a lot of you guys. So this is a Town Hall 9 version, and first, this video has been pre-recorded, so you're going to be listening to it a day or two after I recorded it. I'm on vacation right now, and it is on a bit of an anti-two-star type base. Now, the reason I'm in One Hive Alpha is because at the moment, One Hive Genesis is not doing wars. We're taking a few days off before the CWL Season 3 uh, begins. So, as a result, I'm here in Alpha, and the most common types of bases, as you guys saw in the last video, if you watched that, are these anti-two-star type bases. So just to kind of finish off the uh, the mini-series here on these anti-two bases, I'm gonna show a base destruction, which, if you guys don't remember, is a series where we look at a base, we talk about it for a moment, then we look at some attacks that were not successful and talk about how it was eventually cleaned up to get the three stars. So starting off on this base, I'm not gonna put it into U-Doodle because I think it's simple enough. Um, it's, a, it's a good candidate for Laloon, for a stoned hobo, like a golem hog attack. There's different strategies you can use on it, not the best base, but you gotta be careful. There are some um, mistakes you can make. Now the attackers here choose to use air, at least the first two uh, choose that. So I'm gonna talk about air for a second. Um, first of all, it's a good base for Laloon. Um, even without max heroes like Seven has, you can still get um, pretty deep into the base with a kill squad, especially with a CC of Bowlers or a P.E.K.K.A. even. Um, both are decent uh, things to have in your CC. The main issue here is too wide of a spread on the Golems, so they take so much damage just to create the funnel. He's basically investing almost 60 troop space just to tank for funnel creation. So um, not to mention the wall breaker fail and having to use the jump probably much quicker than he would have liked to, so he's not getting as deep into the base. Um, I think the, the real Achilles heel of this attack was the fact that those golems go down so early and they're so spread out, which isn't an issue in certain attacks, but when you're trying to just bite off a medium-sized chunk of the base, it's not a huge kill squad, it's a medium-sized kill squad, you don't want to spread out more than you have to, and Seven spread his golems out uh, way too far. They took so much damage that one of them was already busted by the time he was dropping his wall breakers. So as a result, he doesn't get the necessary tanking. The wall breaker fail, of course, doesn't help, but I think the wall breaker fail might have happened in part because the golems got busted up and some of the defenses retargeted. I'm not sure, I didn't quite catch that. Um, but that is an issue, regardless of if, if it happened to this attack or not. If you're too late on those wall breakers, the golems will get, um, they'll get destroyed and between them popping and the defenses retargeting the golemites that split out of them, the defenses can shoot down some wall breakers, especially some Teslas or quick shooting defenses like those. So you gotta be very careful. Um, doesn't bite off enough of the base. La Loon doesn't quite get the job done. Too much base left up for the only medium sized La Loon he had for the back end. So it's gonna be a uh, one star here. We'll go ahead and fast forward to the end. One more attack to take a look at that did not work. Um, another small issue with it, which I think you guys will face a lot against these types of bases, especially um, good attackers who have good fundamentals, but this is one kind of mistake you can fall into if you're almost too good of an attacker. So you guys will see what I mean in just a moment here. Um, Sunny Maya, I believe his or her attack might be a her, judging on the name, was shown in the last video on a different base, but on this one, have to um, have to show this one because it was almost too good of an attack, like I said. The kill squad gets some great value. Notice how the golems are closer together, not tanking for unnecessary defenses, which would be this archer tower, this expo. The funnel can be created up here without having to tank these defenses, especially when the entry point's over here. These defenses aren't going to pull anything over. There's no risk. They're set back enough that the golems won't walk over to them. So not necessary to take them out for the funnel. So it doesn't waste the golems tanking that area, 
just a few wizards get the funnel done on that side. As a result, has two relatively healthy golems going into the base, and they're going to tank for the dragon and the CC troops, all that uh, damage. So the kill squad's going to get much, much more value. The amount of value a kill squad should get, even with heroes that are slightly lower level than we saw in the last attack, still pretty high level uh, relative to a lot of attackers. So anyway, the kill squad moving through, getting great value. Those level three bowlers, very powerful in the CC. And then all the <laughs> air defenses go down here. A bit of a lucky bounce in that last air defense off the dark elixir storage, but notice how there's still a shell of a base left up, which has quite a few air targeting defenses and two lava hounds are gonna sit on that mortar and just not do anything for him. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Those lava hounds just not gonna tank adequately. They're gonna act like balloons, but balloons that don't do any damage. So pretty useless. Um, they're not gonna get locked onto by any defenses. And with time, you know, always kind of being an issue in certain um, types of attacks, has to get those looms down quick enough that um, they can get through the base here, but still can't move much faster than those lava hounds, has to wait for them to at least try to do some tanking, comes in with a few back end loons, probably should have saved those for cleanup because it's gonna be a race against the clock and we'll see how this one turns out. Um, here's the thing, in terms of improving this attack, there's a few different ways you can look at this. First, if you, if you find yourself in a situation where your kill squad just destroys the core of the base, you get all four air defenses like in this one, it can be very difficult with those lava hounds not popping, which is why if you see your kill squad starting to get close to taking out all the air defenses and you still have like two or even three lava hounds that you have left to deploy, get those down while the air defenses are still alive because that will do a few things for you. First, it'll get the Lava Hounds to take, to take at least some damage, which is um, kind of counterintuitive, but it's important for them to pop so they the Lava Pups can clean up your attack. So start your Laloon quick enough that the Lava Hounds take enough damage for at least one of them to explode, because as you can see here, no Lava Pups makes a very difficult cleanup. But also, by starting those Lava Hounds earlier, they'll actually go inside the base to an air defense, which will make them tank for the balloons. So the balloons won't die as easily because the Lava Hounds, instead of just like going one by one to the defenses, almost like a balloon would, the Lava Hounds are gonna actually go inside the base and be tanking where an air defense is, which is a, typically a better central location than to the first uh, nearest defense that a balloon would go to. So it's better tanking, it's a quicker cleanup, so if you see your kill squad coming in and gonna crush the core of base, take out all those air defenses, get the lava hounds, the loons down quickly, even if your instinct might be to wait and to try to get the most value out of your kill squad first, it's a bit counterintuitive, but it's something you gotta do. So here we go with a cleanup attack by Apex Predator to finish off this base here. I'm tired of using those loons, I guess, just couldn't figure it out. Um, wants to use ground, which is fine. Same entry, he loved how much value his uh, the, the kill squad got on the last attack. So just gonna kind of ride that, ride the wave that was this kill squad. I think he even brings a third golem which wasn't present on that last attack. So definitely loading up heavy on the tanking and the kill squad here. And here comes everything into the core of the base, all three golems out in front tanking. Heroes even lower level than the last attack, 1822, which is getting more to mid-level heroes. Um, which might be something a lot of you guys have, and it goes to show you can use this on lower level bases. Now, um, or sorry, you can use lower level heroes on these maxed out bases if you have the right principles, especially an anti two star layout, which are easier to exploit than a tough anti three star base in some situations. Um, what was I going to say? The yes, if you don't have bowlers in your CC, you want to typically bring. A P.E.K.K.A., I mean, it depends on the level of troops you can get. It depends on the clan you're in and what they can donate. But P.E.K.K.A.s, Valks, and even just more Wizards are all good options to add DPS to your kill squad. The Bowlers are really a DPS troop. They're going to stay behind those Golems, which is why if you do bring Valks, 
don't bring two or three golems, bring one at the most, because the golems will only tank for the first defense or two before the Valks get too far out in front of them and defeat the purpose of the golems. So if you are bringing Valks or even a P.E.K.K.A., troops that live on the front line, don't um, bring too many golems. If you have wizards or bowlers, then it makes more sense to bring golems because you know the odds are very good that the bowlers, the wizards, or whatever it is are going to stay behind your golems, not get too far out in front, not get shot down. Um, it just makes more sense. So keep that in mind for your kill squad. Nice attacks. Attack to Apex Predator. Cleaning this one up. Hope the video helped. Tried to um, give you guys the best content I could before um, I'm going on vacation. As I said, this one's pre-recorded and it's from the One Hive Alpha War. These are very common types of bases they face in their random searches, but they're also looking to start doing some arranged wars at some point, um, or they already have been doing some arranged wars, but even doing some more stuff, possibly even entering a, a league at some point. So One Hive Alpha doing good, some awesome attacks from their, this war um, in the last few videos. That'll do it for this one. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys uh, in the next video, probably going to be a CWO video um, talking about the last war that probably will have happened next time you guys hear my voice. So look forward to that, and I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.